with a reality ripping tear and supersonic pulse. Void, Jida, along with their reflections, were violently flung from one end of the rift and into a vortex stream that would take them to wherever or whatever the beyond was. All shouting, the large team went flipping and spiraling forwards into a massive, multicolored environment, looking akin to the eye of a storm. Tons of clouds and debris swirled around the group, cracking with powerful strands of lightning and surging cosmic radiation, a power that left both Void and Jida and V glowing bright. Tears might! Void worriedly bellowed in complete astonishment and shock, for the group was suddenly separated by a mighty thundercut of lightning. Void! Jida exclaimed with worry, as the others just shouted in a state of whiplash. Freckles! Jida's husband called right back before flying into the cloudy vortex. <gasps> Gasping in an echoed breath, Void glanced from both his left and right, watching his wisps of colorful energy slithered past him like turbocharged snakes. It was as though they had all been thrown into a giant cup of cotton candy. That was the only way Void could describe it. The air was thick, warm, but also smooth. The smell of this warp stream was almost like a mix of copper and chlorine. A strange and numbing sense that left his brain spinning in all directions. Wincing and baring his teeth, Void began to suddenly hear voices from all around. Voices of people he knew, but also didn't know. Jida, Nock, Joby, Pofnu, and then some odd ones. Naja, Coco, Kor, and his own son, sounding to be calling from a distant memory. Jay. The spark whispered in strain before a large chunk of rock soared in and smashed in the void's side, sending him spiraling further into the storm. Flying and then clanking into one another, both Boat and Vivian clashed and then groaned in pain as Jida tried to maintain a balance beside them. <laughs> Watch your spitting, you mango-headed tank! Left Vivian's mouth while Boat gave her a stare of begrudging apology. Focus! Try and stay together! The purple-haired musician tried to stay through the spiral as Joby and Pavnu suddenly spun past them, arms still interlocked. Oh god, I'm gonna puke! Joby exclaimed with a queasy, green-cheeked face. Not on me! Not on me! Pavnu fearfully cried with a disgusted wince at her sister's warning. Leaping from spiraling rocks to shards of flipping crystals, V, with Chibi on his back, looked almost to be in his element. The larger matter moved and stayed forwards with such precision that a passing T had to ask. Dude, how are you so elegant right now? He inquired with a gasp before Tiger soared down and caught her husband mid-flight. Muscle memory from Lotus. He forced me through a lot of space realms similar to this one. Revealed the big green matter birth before flipping forwards once again and finding a balance glide beside T and Tiger. Using her new capabilities of flight, Jida soared over to her daughters and got them both situated before gruffing and taking notice of Void, who had activated his wings but struggled to stay afloat. Oh, stars! She gasped before blasting forwards in a sharp lavender pulse. Reaching out, Jida practically tackled her red glowing spark and stabilized him as well. Hey, you good there, hot stuff? She asked as Void's eyes both bulged and swirled with dizziness. Shaking his head, he took in a breath and then nodded. I am now. Thanks, Freckles. Smiling and kicking out burning embers from her feet, Jida soared down to the recollected group that now had both Vivian and Void stabilized as well all looking dizzy, but amazed. I've never seen anything like this before. So many colors of radiating energies, all collected in the one massive spiral of omnicellular power. It's, it's incredible. T exclaimed with widened eyes as he watched the colors dance on by. Friends, if I am not mistaken, I take it that this is a transport to the beyond. V asked as he stared on ahead. Yeah, sorry for not giving a good explanation before departure. You know something about this? Ford applied as the cloudy spiral began to get faster and faster. An old friend of mine described it to me many years ago. 
Really started to look into it before Lotus happened. It had scriptures on it and everything. V stated as they all began to move faster and faster. I recall a passage talking about its entrance, described exactly like this. V continued before Joby shouted aloud. Look! Turning their heads upwards, Void and the others set their sights upon a bright white light at the end of the spiral, buzzing and flaking with a mysterious energy. There's our entrance. As for what lays on the other side, not much is known. So hang on. V boasted as everyone clung together in tight holds. Looking forwards and then to each other, Void and Jida both gave a tense but hope induced stare. After two excruciating long years, they finally made it. Realizing that they were now closer than ever to reaching their sun, they quickly touched foreheads and then stared back at the bright, gleaming light. Hang on, buddy. Void whispered before closing his eyes and crossing through with the others, all entering into the great beyond. Journeys Ahead, Beyond Trilogy, Part 3, Chapter 1, Into the Unknown, written and narrated by T.S. Proart. Shooting out from the sky in unique bolts of energy, everyone went rocketing downwards into a brand new world. However, their speed had been such a velocity that no one had time to take in any of its high sights. One moment, they were all plummeting, the next, crashing hard into a mystical, foresty land. Both yelling from their plummeting fall, Wood and Jida went crashing through dim green trees and landed hard on glowing turquoise grass. The married pair both went bouncing and flailing, throwing up greenery and mud, while a gentle rainfall descended from above. Sliding to a complete and pain-induced halt, Void went back first before catching his wife, breaking her fall, and more importantly, protecting her from the hard stone Void had stopped upon. <sighs> Ow. The spark groaned as Jida slowly sat up in a daze. <sighs> what? You... Damn it, Void! Why, why did you... She asked before rolling off his body and carefully helping him sit upright. Because it's been my job from day one, protecting you. He answered with a smile and roll on his shoulders, before suddenly taking notice of a bunch of multicolored butterflies, both glowing and fluttering about them. Giving Void a, seriously, type of look, Jida went to say something else, when suddenly Joby and Paul of New Land as well. Using her tails, the spectral Kitsune created a soft pulse while holding on to her sister. Sliding to a swift and wet stop beside her parents, the Kitsune kicked up a wave of glowing green pollen from the plants below her paws, in turn, sending more butterflies to flutter on. Ha! Still got it! She said before placing Joby down to her feet. Still got it? You were on fours two years ago. What do you mean you still got it? Joby tirely inquired while brushing herself off. I was a badass before my evolution, sister. It's just the facts. The spectral fox expressed with a wink and smile before the others began to land down. Coming through all together, T, Tiger, Vivian, Bode, V, and Chibi all came crashing to the forest below. With metal clanks and clunks, they all fell in their own ways. Reacting fast, Tiger swooped her way down and caught T, bringing them both to a soft landfall. Flipping forwards, V without flaw landed to his feet, performing a perfect slide that would most certainly be bad for a normal person's ankles. As for Vod and Vivian and Chibi, they all landed hard akin to Void and Jida. The yellow spark crashed face first into a slop of mud, while Vivian landed back first in the grass, ending with Chibi slamming hard right on top of her face. <coughs> Ew! Get off me! The pink spark angrily barked before reaching her clawed hand up, taking Chibi by his hoodie, and throwing him into a log with an audible clank. Ah! Hey! That freaking hurt! 
The low guy whined while everyone slowly stood up to their feet. <sighs> okay. Head count. One, two, three, four, five. Boy listed while pointing to his team members, taking note that they had all still been together in one piece. <sighs> okay. We did it. We did it. We're here. We're in. We're actually in. Another. Freaking patch of woods. Void said in slight surprise and disappointment while looking at his surroundings. Huh. Well, this is not what I was expecting to see for a place that's been shrouded in mystery. Joby mumbled as she and the others eyed the trees, which looked normal and uninteresting. The only real thing of note were that their leaves all faintly glowed within what was merely a misty environment. Hold your disappointments, young one. Look down. V suddenly stayed with a hand raised to Joby. Looking down, everyone took notice that below their feet, their respective colors both glowed, but also looked to be slithering into the dirt. Roots seemed to ignite to life as a rainbow-colored mixture that quickly expanded and traversed beneath the soil. Whoa. What's going on? Jada asked with a taken aback tone as the entire ground looked to now shimmer with reds, pinks, blues, yellows, nearly every single color, their energy color. Suddenly sprouting and taking shape emerged all kinds of flowers, blooming through a pollen-like summon. In disbelief, everyone glanced around in awe, watching as all different kinds of plants began to bloom, plants that looked familiar. Growing the life, came flowers and trees from Savaheim. Not just Void Savaheim, but everyone's Savaheim. Flowers from Voids, Ts, Vs, and even mechanical flowers from Vode Savaheim all suddenly spawned while blooming red trees from Pavnu's Fallen World suddenly grew. What the? Void asked in shock as different trees from both Vs and Vivian's worlds appeared to light alongside both blue and white grass to mix with the greenery beneath. Stones and bushes from everyone's worlds also appeared, creating what was essentially a strange mashup of multiple worlds, all spawning from the strange energy beneath their toes. What's, What's going, going on? on? Tiger asked in a state of awe and wonder as V began to think back. Fascinating. The old books were true, it seemed. The green glowing matter birth stated as he knelt down and brushed a white glowing flower, one that had been native to a garden that had existed within a small turf. True. What do you mean by true? Vivian sternly asked as the group eyed him for an answer. Legends foretold that once you enter the beyond space, it adapts to your soul in unexpected ways, one of them being bringing memories from your mind back to life. Both good and bad. He explained before fully standing back to his feet. All blinking in astonishment, Boy and the rest all glanced between each other before looking back to V with inquisitive stares. What? Void asked when suddenly rumbling came across the ground. Gasping, the group all stumbled and held one another as the trees and newly sprouted plants shook and swayed. Earthquake! Earthquake, everyone! Vod exclaimed as the distant sounds of the ground breaking arose from far off. What? What the hell is that? Jada asked before Joby suddenly turned and began walking towards the sound. It's coming from over here! She exclaimed before beginning to jog through the mystical foliage. Joby, wait! Void called with worry as he began to chase after her. Void! Joby! Jada called back as she and the others quickly followed suit. Sprinting behind the light matter being, the forest continued to shift and change to their presence. Flowers from Jada's earth and cartoon-looking plants bloomed from Chibis, being born from their souls and memories, as V had described. Running to a clearing and breaking through the tree line, the entire group halted themselves behind Joby, who had stopped at a massive cliff's ledge. Looking ahead, the group followed her now-stunned gaze and set their sights upon an astonishing scene. 
one that no one had expected to see this early on. <sighs> Bye, Matira. Void whispered in shock as everyone took in the sight of a city and abandoned nature taking over city. Hundreds of skyscrapers stretched high into the sky, being riddled with holes and broken apart seams. All the color had faded from these large structures. Windows shattered, paint crusted away. Plants and all sorts of alien looking life had taken over the city for what looked to have been hundreds if not thousands of years. Mysterious birds that looked to have been made out of mirror space glass even fluttered about, some looking normal sized, others as large as mini planes. However, that wasn't even the most amazing part. Growing out from the city streets emerged even more buildings, some from Jida's Aurora, T. Salvaheim, Bode Cyber City, and many others from the Reflection's own worlds. This had been the cause of the earthquake, the rise of mashed up buildings from their universes, creating a bizarre fresh to old type of contrast that left everyone amazed and slightly terrified. Above, the skies consisted of slow changing hues between all kinds of colors. Stars and Aurora Borealis looking lights danced within these mixing shades, while even consisting of a faint blue sun above. However, that's when everyone suddenly took notice of what appeared to be words. Hundreds upon thousands of faint words, ranging from all kinds of languages across many different universes, faintly drifting behind the stars, looking almost akin to a large page from a book soaring on by. What the actual... Oh. oh. Matira's might! Vivian said with widening eyes as she suddenly pointed to the world's horizons. There, ever so faintly, was a titan-sized figure, a being so large that it almost made up the entirety of the sky's wall view. And off to the right, was another. Two godly forces that overlooked this strange world. Gigantic, silent, and yet familiar. That's when it clicked. The Beyonders. Void whispered, as the being to the right was the rider, outlined in white and filled with a dark space blue essence, watching with one glowing white orb of light. To the left was the narrator, outlined in white as well, but consisting of a space-filled green essence. These two titans looked to have been spaced apart across from one another in what looked to be almost in a spherical way. The designer was nowhere to be seen, but perhaps he had been behind them, creating an almost three-way viewing scene upon whatever the beyond was. They're real. Pavnu whispered in disbelief, so they all suddenly took notice of something strange. Wrapped around the Beyonders were bright white, staticky strands of energy that looked to have put them in a state of frozen stillness. Going upwards and off their bodies, these strands of power connected into what everyone suddenly took notice to be a spire of energy in the distance. A bright white spire that was connected to a distant, lavender yet cherry-colored glass tower. Emanating from out of its top was a static white essence fountain that struck the sky and created a glassy crack effect of power across the lands. It was an odd sight, but one that Void and Jida felt immediately drawn towards. You feel that? He asked as he closed his eyes and focused. Yeah. Is, is it? With a gentle red blossoming hum, Void focused his essence and then Sully gasped. It's him. He's all the way over there. J J Jay's in that tower. Void exclaimed with a point before Sully feeling a wave of unease. And so is Lotus. He stayed with billowing fear, leaving everyone to eye down the large structure. Something. No, so something's wrong. They're, they're both. Something isn't right. Void say to everyone's worried stare. It's like... It's like there's a battle raging. Both of them are... They're both struggling against the other, but it's... It's... Void stuttered while grabbing his head. It's too far to determine, but... They're in there. I can feel it. Void finished the Jidas, Jobies, and Pofnus shaken breaths. 
walking up to the ledge. Vote activated a pair of goggles and scanned the structures from afar, getting a read as to its status. Hmm. Well, it appears that the spire is about a thousand feet tall in both width and height. It also appears to be about 200 miles from our current placement. The large spark elaborated, leaving Vivian the turn with an uneasy face. 200 miles? Seriously? She asked before Void spoke up. No worries, gang. I can just pour us over. All we gotta worry about is Lotus and... What? What the... Void slowed his words as he looked down to his portal opener, seeing an error message on full display. Uh, I was about to say, it appears that this realm is giving off an EMP frequency that is disabling our portal travels. I think the only way we can actually transport it like that is through the ritual. T revealed as everyone began to look at one another. Are you saying we gotta walk 200 miles? Chibi inquired as he hopped and rested upon V's shoulder. Eh, it shouldn't be too bad. I mean, we have a whole city to our disposal. Surely we'll find a big van that could carry us all. T said with an optimistic tone as both Void and Jida stood front and center. Definitely. We didn't come this far just to let a few numbers slow us down. Let's see what we can find. The red crested spark assured before activating his wings and leaping off the cliff. Falling behind, Jida summoned her fire and flew after her husband. Activating a set of thrusters from behind her back, Joby took Pofnu by her paws and began to glide downwards with a yellow flaming exhaust. Whew, cool. City exploration. Let's roll. T exclaimed as he summoned his wings and went after her, as well alongside Tiger. Using their thrusters, Vivian and Vode blasted off as well, while V and Chibi lashed themselves upon the tubes dangling below Vode's chest piece. Hmm. I've got a bad feeling about this. The green matter of gruffed as they all descended down to the large mashup city below. Landing together within the middle of an abandoned city road, Team Orbisol all looked off in different directions, took in the sight of what was ultimately a strange yet saddening environment. Although buildings old and new stood tall, the state of decay and ruin upon most of them gave off an eerie sense of stillness and depression. As ironic as it was, the sound of silence was as loud as it could possibly be. Nothing was to be heard within these lands. No pedestrians, music, anything. It was everything entangled in the wrapping of nothing. So, just a thought. If some of the buildings from our memories and lives are here, then... Does that mean all these older structures came from... You know... Jida inquired as the group all hesitantly marched together down the barren road... Other souls have most certainly been to these lands, their minds adding onto the city, all from different placements in space and time. V ominously answered Jida's curious suggestion, now acting as though to be the team's guide in some strange way. Looking off to the side, Void took notice of an old, nature-taken-over skeleton, a human skeleton, resting along an old shop's wall. It appeared that V's knowledge held true. All right, team. Let's hurry and find a vehicle or some kind of transport. I'm starting to feel as though we may not be in the friendliest section of the neighborhood. The leading spark exclaimed while looking down to a massive city gap before his eyes. Vines and greenery swayed from above, while strange yet crystallized glass life forms quietly went on by, having taken the form of woodland critters. I agree. Something isn't right here. The kid soon added as she suddenly stopped mid-stride upon stepping on a jawless human skull. Lifting her foot paw up and off its decaying front, she eyed the deceased sockets of what was once a living being 
now having died to either natural or maybe predatory causes. So not very right. Traversing onwards, the large group both explored and continuously took in the sights. Each car or vehicle they found had either been rotted to its engine, or had come straight from the early 1900s, or a world they had no knowledge on. Amidst their search, trees and all sorts of plants slowly grew from in between roadway cracks, while the silent, glass-shaped animal life pranced on by. They appeared to be deer-shaped, but flat and origami-looking. Yet, as they all moved with bounces and leaps, it was as though to give off a strange sense of peace within these strange lands. Watching these reflecting animals prance on by, Joby simply stood and crossed her arms. Her yellow scarf blew within the cold, tame winds, while the others continued the search for a working machine. As she looked onwards, her mind felt to both settle and tweak a tad. She couldn't tell whether this had been a moment of rekindled peace, or perhaps a form of lingering dread. Hey, you alright, Sweet Pea? Looking over her shoulder, Joby met the eyes of her true father walking up to be by her side. The look in his cherry red eyes was that of both excitement mixed with fear, same as her own. Nervous. Replied the light matter girl as she focused back forwards towards the distant and elegant glass shard beings. I just... I can't believe we actually made it. After all this time, I... I was really starting to think that my optimism was just words crashing to a brick wall. Joby explained with a bumpy vocal tone as Void approached and wrapped a comforting arm around her shoulder. Well, if it weren't for you keeping your head above the water, I doubt that we would have made it here, kiddo. Void replied with a tender set of words as he too looked at the strange deer ahead. In all honesty, you've been the strongest out of all of us these past two years. A real leader in some of our darkest spots, guiding us back to the light. And if I haven't made it clear yet, I'm very proud of you, Joby. Void lovingly expressed, as both him and her watched the animals disappear into some nearby buildings, leaving the last to be a doe and her baby behind the herd. You don't mean that. Joby replied with a slight smirk and side-eye, leaving Void the glare in a mimicking expression. I do, sweetheart. Listen to me. Void went on before fully turning Joby to face him. I know I'm not your real father, but I'm damn proud to have raised you as my daughter. Even if you don't think it's so, you helped us get here. You held us up, kept us in line. We're all here because of your optimism. Remember that. Void lovingly expressed with a smile that left Joby's heart turning a tad from his words. And I'm more than happy to call you my father. My real father. Joby replied with a heartfelt tone before the two of them embraced. <laughs> Stall your fear, sweet pea. We're going to bring him home. Void whispered, while V silently watched from afar. Hey, big guy. You alright? Vivian asked the matter birth, as the two of them had been trying to hotwire an old van back to life. Yeah, I'm fine. V replied while Chibi continued to rest over his shoulder, looking to try and make a map for their environment. Looking up with a stern stare, Vivian could see similar emotions within V's face, emotions she knew all too well, longing for loved ones and reminiscing on old memories. Softening her eyes and looking back down to the wires within her hands, Vivian took in a tiny breath before looking off to the side, trying to find the exact words she wanted to say. Look, I understand what you're probably feeling and thinking. They're different people, it's not them. But it's hard to think that when they share their faces. You'll get used to it after a bit, maybe. 
The frosty pink spark said, leaving V to gently glance up from his wiring. You lost them too? He inquired with a raised eyebrow. She has my Jida. Granted, we never had any kids. I mean, we're both women, how could we? So, I have no right to really compare to your loss on such a level. Vivian replied as the two multiverse cross siblings locked their eyes with one another. Claiming my tragedy to overshadow yours is unacceptable. It doesn't matter how big or small a loss is. At the end of the day, the pain we share is the same. V said before dropping his wires entirely. Hiding or belittling our grief only makes us weaker. Only accepting and expressing our thoughts will make us stronger in the end. If you hadn't heard this yet, I am sorry for your loss. Perking up with a tiny smile, Vivian nodded her head towards V before speaking aloud once more. You know, for someone who is so large and violent in a fight, I didn't expect you to be so soft-spoken. If anything, I thought you'd kind of be the dumb one of this little group we have going on. Vivian chuckled out as T suddenly shocked himself while tampering with a semi-truck. All good. He called with a sizzling thumbs up before falling backwards to Tigers, Jidas, Vodes, and Pofnu's disbelief. Hmm. Never judge a book by its cover, sister. V finished before reaching a hand out and resting it upon Vivian's shoulder, giving her some proper brotherly love. Noted. She replied before looking back down to her clawed arm in a sense of sorrow. Sweetheart, are you okay? Tiger wordly asked as both her and Jida helped T back to his feet. Yeah, just a little bit of a shock. <laughs> Feel a little twitchy, but I've been struck by protonic charges before. This, this was nothing. The blue capped mechanic said with a little surge from his mouth before wiping his forehead and eyeing the semi truck down. Seems like all the vehicles here are run down to their cores. It's not surprising, but. It only means that our journey is going to be lasting a lot longer than I'd imagined. Vode stated as he scanned the vehicles with the glowing yellow dots within his chest, seeing that they had all been deactivated for a long time, with no hope of starting up again. What if I were to give it a charge? Void suddenly asked as both him and Joby marched their way up to the group. With your electricity? Jada speculated as Void smirked, raised his right hand, and buzzed out a red wave of spire-red-looking electricity. I mean, it's worth a shot. T out with a thumbs up, as Vivian, V, and Chibi reapproach as well. Nodding and deploying his battle mask, Void slapped both of his hands together and proceeded to rub them against each other. From this, the metal forms began to glow a hot, ruby red as a static red energy was formed. Stand back, everyone. This may get... Before Void could finish, he suddenly halted his words, as the ground rumbled as though a large being had set its foot down. Then again, and again, the road below their feet rattled and cracked, booming with a reverberating thump from around the city blocks. Whoa, what's that? Jed asked as everyone readied themselves for whatever had made itself known. Thump, thump, thump. The noises came, thump, 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 all until a new and conjoining sound was heard. Deep metallic gargling, broken words that sounded to almost be radio clicks, Morse code but in some twisted sense of tone. As these strange noises met V's ear holes, his green eye suddenly shrunk with his stance shifting into a prepared position. Everyone get down! He called with an emerald flare as he extended his hand and used his matter-connected telekinesis to shove everyone down beside the truck. Ah, hey, wait, what's the... Joby hacked out as the others gruffed in surprise. In response, V gave the matter girl a stern stare with a finger pressed to his lips. Quiet. He spat with tensed eyes 
before huddling down himself and activating an arm blaster. V, what's wrong? Void whispered as he charged himself up. Peeking out, the green matter birth eyed the open roads, with the others soon following his sights. As they all peeked their heads out, they all watched as the one, or rather, the ones who caused the ruckus, stepped in the view. Stepping out from around a city block corner emerged a large, two-front-toed, heel-spurred mechanical foot, connected to a steel mashup of pistons, metal plates, and rivets for a leg. Connected to these forms by two massive clanking side gears was an odd, blocky, diamond-shaped mashup of parts that had one clear red and purple glowing mixed glass eyeball lens. Protruding from its almost camera-shaped head sprouted two antennas that were attached to a mess of wires around the machine that now audibly made the alien-like sounds. This contraption was about 20 feet tall to 15 feet wide, making it not as big as some other threats, but still big enough to cause some possible damage. Following closely behind it appeared another one, slightly taller but with four prong-shaped legs and a similar top half. It too had one robotic eye, but four antennas instead of two. Then another robot appeared, and another, and another, several of them, looking all similar yet different in design to the other. Huffing in a cold sweat, V turned back down behind the semi and charged his weapons up with a bright green glow. V, what the hell are those things? Void asked in a cold sweat as the others all huddled down as well, readying their respective weapons. <sighs> Walkers. They were technology designed by my Lotus's Neo Ameliorites. The Matter Birth revealed while deploying his battle mask in a sharp clank. They were built to keep me, my family, along with anyone else who fought back in the Second War at bay, to eradicate those who were considered as a dyad. The Matter Birth went on before looking back out at the machines. Wait, how are they here then? GB wordly asked as he slid off V's shoulder and huddled by the truck in a cold sweat. Did you not get the memo? This place takes both good and bad things from our memories and manifests them back to life. And it appears my mind was the lucky winner at this moment. V stated before looking at the others in a serious stare. Great, how do we take him out then? Void questioned as he glared with his red eyes behind the mask. Take out either their legs or eyes. If we work together, we shouldn't be in too much of a pickle. Just watch the cable arms and artillery fire, understand? Looking at one another, Void and the reflections all nod their heads and ready themselves for a fight. On your mark, brother. You know these things better than we do. Tell us when. Void stayed towards V while activating his arm blades. Nodding, V took a peek over the semi-truck, gruffed, and then made his move. Now! Jumping upwards by his arm cannons, V quickly charged his horns and blasted himself forwards. Opening his chest sides, the Matter Birth unleashed a wave of green energy rockets to the machines below, causing some of the walkers to stumble and turn towards his direction. As the closest one locked his visor upon him, the Matter Birth activated his green blades and slashed both his eye and upper half apart all before landing to the ground with the machine's corpse. Alerting with a buzzing sound, all the walkers ignited to life with red glows and activated both turrets from their sides, along with snake-shaped cable-clawed arms. Surrender, Dyad. Do not resist the amelioration movement. One of them boasted with a natural, automated voice, left Fee scowling behind his mask. Yet, before he could be jumped, the others all joined into the fight. Igniting forwards, Tiger turned into her spectral light ball form and began to clash and rebound off the machines, causing them all to stumble and groan in their mechanical primal ways. Following closely behind in a warp, Tiger immediately ignited her fire, flew, and clashed herself into several of the machines, denting and melting their bodies with each hit given. Whirling around, while the walker shot its clawed arm towards the soaring musician, who spun, caught it with ease, and smirked. With her powers flaring up, she swung the mechanical killer around and threw it away and towards Vode, who activated a spear and sliced its upper head clean off. Heads up! He exclaimed before punching the metal chunk upwards with a golden surge. From behind, Vivian unleashed a frostbite blast into its deactivated form, 
in turn, sending it forwards in a now frozen over state. Flying through the air in a now icy cocoon, the head clashed and shattered apart into another walker, breaking it down into a malfunctioning rapid fire state. Leaping upon its fumbling build, Void, Joby, and Pofnu united and slashed their weapons in unison, splitting the big robot apart into several pieces, while the others raged on with their own fights below. <sighs> I knew you're right, tech mixed with earth parts. T assumed as he leapt up from a snatching claw and foot stomp. If I'm correct here, he said before leaping upwards and climbing upon the mechanical beast. With some simple configuration and rewiring, T went on as he landed upon the head of the machine and slashed its top off. I should theoretically, he continued before reaching into the robot's head battery and connected his metal fingers into its extra wire ports. Be able to. Aha! The blue Matterbirth exclaimed as the robot's red eye suddenly buzzed and turned blue, signifying T now had full control over the machine. Oh, Jane would try and kill me again if she saw this. T boasted with a grin as he suddenly turned the machine and began to open fire upon some of the remaining robots. Do not resist the amelioration movement. The remaining death machines exclaimed as several more appeared and began to open fire. From this onslaught, T was thrown off his newly acquainted robot, while the others all suddenly activated runes and her shields to deflect the blast. Landing down, Jida quickly threw her hands out and created a force field of purple flames around herself as well as her two daughters. As she did this, Void and the other reflections stood their ground and used their respective magic as a defense mechanism. Oh, there's too many of them! Chibi shouted with fear from underneath the semi-truck as everyone struggled to stand. Clenching his fists, Void began to take deep breaths and charge himself up for a pulse. Yet, as he did, he, along with everyone else, suddenly realized that the buildup was now much faster than before. Within moments, his horn shimmered red, along with the entirety of his body. He had surged into such a hot state that both his mechanical and natural skeleton was visible underneath his synthetic skin. A red electric pollen essence bloomed out of his pores and seams as a spark opened his eyes to reveal a bright glowing red stare. Throwing his arms out, Void released a supercharged, spark-like scream that coincided with his new pulse, a massive red electricity EMP-powered pulse that erupted outwards for what had to at least be 50 feet. Once released, the walkers all immediately shut down and went flying to the road's nature-taken-over forms. The blast was cherry red, buzzing with electric power and spark-induced rage. It was both beautiful yet terrifying. As his charge ended, Void stumbled forwards and returned to normal, and just glared with a now steaming build. Vivian's readings were indeed correct. His power had increased significantly, and his act displayed it in both a threatening yet elegant way. Void! Void! Oh my stars! Jida called as she and the others all ran up to his rising and steaming form. God damn! That was huge! He exclaimed with shock as the red crescent spark turned to face everyone while deactivating his mask. Are you alright? Vivian questioned in a tired breath, leaving Void to just nod his head. Yeah. Yeah, I'm alright. He assured as the others began to collect themselves. Great work, everyone. If only it had been that easy before. V chimed in while also retracting his battle mask. Reaching up, T patted his fellow Matterbird's shoulder while they all just eyed the dismembered machines of war. Can't say my Ameliorites had walking death robots, but they had a gorilla dog. A bunch of angry gorilla dogs. The blue Matterbird said, leaving V to bite the inside of his cheek with dawning memories. Whirling their heads with a set of gasps, Team Orbisol all set their eyes towards the manhole cover that suddenly blasted upwards and out of the road. Huh! Beezes! Why did that just... Jada asked before getting cut off by another one, shooting towards the sky, and then another, and another. Huh! What now? Pofnu asked as everyone readied their weapons yet again. Boom! Went another one. Shoom! Arose another. 
wincing. Everyone stared with stern eyes as these metal plates landed back to the ground, as a strange and purple-red smoke began to exit the sewers. What the hell? Vivian asked as they all watched this strange misty energy rise up into the sky before their eyes. Wait a second. T sat with a stifled breath as both him, Tiger, and even V looked to suddenly halt in place with stern eyes. What is it? You guys recognize something? Thrud questioned as the red and purple hazes suddenly began to swirl together into a large and massive cloud. No. No, it can't be. V stated in a tensed up tone as a low, thundering boom erupted from the collecting energy. Stepping back, everyone eyed this strange formation as it progressively got larger and larger in size. The winds began the howl, the skies above fully darkened, as this strange and mysterious force continued to grow and grow. No. No, not here. Not now. Of all the things to pull from my mind. T called with a cold sweat, getting the others to turn with worry. What? What is it? Joby worriedly inquired as a low, rumbling roar came from within the cloud's depths. Turning back forwards, everyone watched in shock as a large, electrified, clouded left hand arose and grasped its mitts around the skyscraper. From its right, another appeared and took hold of another building's top, as T began to explain. When I defeated my core, I absorbed all of his dark matter. Over time, that darkness inside fed off my soul and memories until it all bellowed out of my body into this. T revealed as a massive, ghostly red and blue eyeball appeared from within the storm center, releasing a powerful roar upon the group below it. A memory storm! T shouted as the large weather beast smashed its fist into the ground and atop the fallen walker immediately disintegrating it into ash. Oh my fuck! Vivian shouted with wide eyes as the clouded kaiju glared down at them all with its creepy, massive eyeball. Bit of a complicated origin much? Bobnu exclaimed as everyone now began to fully step away. Void of which, now rapidly tried to open a portal to no avail. I mean, my J came out of this thing if you wanted to be weirder. T shouted back as the large force of memories began to lean forwards, with its clouds morphing into the faint faces of Atlas, Evelyn, and others that Mosin recognize. We'll discuss later. We need to leave. If your memory storm was anything like mine, then it only spills bad news. V exclaimed as the monster slowly reached out with a sharp and extending electric hand. Yet, before another move could be made, a blue and green firework wrapped up in a fish type of net, Sully launched itself forwards from behind the group and struck the memory storm in its eye, causing it to scream and recoil back. Perking up with surprise, everyone watched as the monster moved its storm away for a moment, until they all heard the approaching sounds of tires revving on the road. Whirling their heads, Void and the others watched in complete surprise, as a massive artillery vehicle that looked akin to a Mad Max truck screeched to a sliding halt. Unleashing a barrage of fireworks from several cannon barrel tops, they all exploded and struck upon the monster, lighting the city up into a multicolored shade of rainbow lights. As the vehicle slid to a sideward stop, its side suddenly flapped open into a small ramp to reveal a strange sight. Standing inside this machine was a blue ripple frog with white hair, a robot cowboy looking character, a one-armed yellow rabbit donned in blue and purple armor, and a feminine-looking sweater-dressed skeleton with a floating skull head. Before anyone had time to ask, Young Ripple suddenly shouted at the group, Get in if you want to live! Blinking in astonishment, everyone in Void's group glanced at one another before turning back to the massive vehicle and those who stood within it. Do y'all want to live or die? Let's go! The Ripple exclaimed again while punching the interior of the truck. Running forwards, Chibi sprinted towards the armored vehicle without a second thought. In turn, getting everyone to follow, they were unsure what to think about the sudden rescue. But any chance was better than certain doom. Let's go, let's go, let's go! The robot cowboy roared 
as everyone ascended the ramp and entered into a bus-like interior that dangled with wires and strange lights above. Painless windows sat at each seat, giving everyone a nice view wherever they sat. Before introductions could be made, the skeleton girl hit a button which closed the ramp hatch into a sealed door. Can't punch it! The yellow rabbit called towards a tiny, chubby, cartoon-looking anthropomorphic feline who wore several green rubber bands and a white goofy kitty mask. The little guy had been seated at the front wheel, having been using stilts to just reach the pedals. Without saying a word, the little kitten set the truck in the drive, hit the gas, swerved, and began blasting down the road, causing everyone inside to lurch back. Coiling itself back around, the memory storm snarled and began to give immediate chase. Falling into a few seats, one the others eyed the strange folks, getting a better look as to who they were. The Blue Ripple Frog was almost identical to Coco when she was a teenager. She had bright white and long spiked hair that was donned with a pink flower at the right hand side of her head. She wore a tan tank top with a three added jewel necklace above. The frog also wore baggy black pants that were stopped upon her knees by sports tape. The same white tape also went around her forearms which were fairly large and bulky. On her body she had several white line tattoos just like Coco. However, her eyes were much bigger and full of wondrous life, gleaming with a yellow stare that held many emotions within. The robot cowboy was about the same size as the Ripple, probably just an inch away from being five feet tall. He had a spherical metal plated head with big glowing yellow eyes and a smile. An old brown shaded western hat rested over his head, while an orange cloak swayed beneath his neck, covering everything up except for his exposed, rusty metal legs. The one-armed yellow rabbit was also anthropomorphic, wearing scratched up blue and purple armor that had a green cloak resting over where the missing arm had been. He had large white whiskers, an eye with one red iris, and the other being green. To top it off, his chest armor had a large purple heart emblem, which looked like I've seen better days. As for the skeleton girl, she had an expressive pair of eye sockets with two purple irises inside. Her head flowed with a lavender and pink flame around it, that rested above a dim plum colored sweater and shorts with an added green sash resting above her pelvis to finish it off she had old gray bands around her feet leaving her legs spinal cord and hands exposed for all to see hey are you folks all right the blue skin ripple questioned as void and the others stared in awe towards the group of characters we saw y'all crashing into the woodlands above alita told us to come and check us out Seems like you've spawned a big boy back there. The robot said in a southern accent as he looked back out the window, seeing the memory storm thrashing buildings that missed its chase. Real beast, that one. The skeleton said with a clacking jaw before heading up to the truck's passenger seat. No need to fear, strangers. You're in safe hands now. The name's Yerick. The rabbit introduced with a hand to his chest. I'm Mori. The skeletal figure exclaimed, And this is Cat. They don't talk. She added, while pointing to the silent animal driving. You can call me Ida, Phyllis. The robot agreed with a smile and tilt in his hat. And I'm Jojo. The ripple said with a smile, causing Void to tilt his head. Jojo? He asked before everyone lurched to the right from a sudden swerve. Hang on, fellas. Cat's gonna get us to a safe zone. Jojo exclaimed before flipping herself up and onto the roof of the vehicle. We got this covered. Just trying out the puke here. Iron Hoof added while everyone just blinked in astonishment. Wait! You guys are... You're all just kids! Jida exclaimed to the two visibly teenage beings as Yerick joined them. Yes, we are! Hang on, ma'am! The rabbit exclaimed leaving all the adults to just eye one another in sudden shock. Rushing to a pair of makeshift artillery stations atop the truck, the three kids suddenly sat in custom-made seats that all came from an old movie theater. Upon buckling themselves in, several cannons made up from old metal pipes and baseball launchers arose and immediately load themselves up from shifting fireworks at their sides. Looking behind as Cat swerved the large vehicle, they all eyed the memory storm that ravaged itself through skyscrapers, 
causing a massive downfall to erupt behind the group. Eesh! These guys must have had a rough life! Jojo exclaimed as she took hold of an old video game controller attached to a long pipe wired connector joint to the cannon. Wait till the boss hears about this one! Yerk exclaimed with a bucktooth grin as he took aim at the large storm monster. That is, we'll make it back in one piece! And ah, can we do just that, y'all? Ironhoof said with a smirk as he charged one of the rockets up and prepared the fire. Then shut your speakers and don't miss, love! Jojo exclaimed, leaving Ironhoof the smirk. Don't worry, sugar. You know me. I never miss. The robot exclaimed while pushing down on his controller's joysticks. In turn, firing out another firework that struck the beast in its electricity-filled chest. Exploring the life in a green eruption, the interior of the memory storm ignited with a green shade, causing the beast to roar in pain and continue forwards in its chase. Firing as well, both Jojo and Yerick unleashed a barrage of 4th of July might into the creature, causing its clouds to separate and for it to lag behind. Unleashing another roar, the mighty beast raised its arms and summoned forth lightning bolts to strike upon the vehicle that both swerved and skidded around from side to side, throwing all of Orbisol around like a bunch of ragdolls. Sorry about that. Kaz a bit of a crazy driver. He's only 11. Mori revealed with a smirk leaving Vivian, who was now on the floor, look up and over Void's leg that now rested above her head. He's what? She asked, as the large vehicle swerved again and threw everyone once more. Don't worry, in a short few moments we'll pass the safety barrier. Once through, the big guy won't be able to hurt us, yada yada yada, you know how it is. The skeleton went on as a large truck was thrown at their vehicle, just nearly missing it by a few feet. Okay, maybe worry a little bit. She added, before everyone's thrown about once again. Matina's might! Pavnu exclaimed, while suddenly falling back and rolling over Joby. Hey, Hafiz! We're almost there! Jojo called as she looked forwards, taking note of a large blue bubble within the distance, a force field of magic that signified their safety. Closing one eye, Ironhoof continued to launch rocket after rocket into the monster's body, stalling it more and more, as it continued to thrash skyscrapers aside with rage. Oh, he's mad now! Yerick shouted, as more lightning bolts began to strike the world in many light strands. Chew on this, you freak of nature! Ironhoof exclaimed with a smirk, as he released one more rocket at the monster, striking it in the eye, and in turn, throwing it back. Yeah! He called, as its arms and body went flailing, Roaring in pain, the memory storm landed hard into the side of a skyscraper, which instantly destroyed it. From impact, its center folded, and in turn, left its large build crashing down near the group's truck. Hang on! Mori exclaimed as Cap pulled the shift stick down and sent the large truck into an overdrive. Emerging from its back exhaust appeared a pair of massive thrusters that sent the heavy automobile forwards. As it lurched ahead, all of Orbisol was thrown backwards, smashing into one another at the backside of the vehicle, as it now evaded around falling rubble and debris. Fading into the rain, the memory storm backed off for the time being, as the large truck swiftly went on ahead, swerved, and at last, entered a long narrow road. Pushing the steering wheel in, Cat sent the truck launching forwards and rearing up upon the distant force field. Reaching down, he disengaged the engines, shut the whole system down, and crossed through its big blue protective wall. Cat turned the large truck to its side, kicking up dirt and debris, all up into a sliding halt. After doing one little donut for added effect, the little guy hit the brakes, sending the vehicle to ever so gently tip, and at last, come to a full stop. Landing back to all of its wheels in a shaken thud, it threw Void and his crew back forwards in a hard lurch that left them all scattered, thrown about, and dazed. It all happened so quickly that nobody really had time to process what just happened. One moment, a literal weather kaiju was upon them. The next, they were all suddenly thrown into a rusty vehicle with a bunch of kids. <sighs> Void groaned as he rubbed his head while Jaya and the others did the same. Hey! We made it! 
Are you strangers okay? Jojo asked as she peeked her head in from the roof, letting her hair dangle and face the light up with glee. Looking up, one of the others all stared with stunned eyes, but nodded, some even giving thumbs up. That was until Jubby's face turned green, and she unleashed a glob of vomit right on the Pofni's leg. Wincing with disgust and a red flare, she glared upon her sister and boasted with rage. I said not on me! She exclaimed as her teenage saviors all chuckled from the scene. With a loud shift and fall, the metal door to the truck dropped down into its ramp form with a hefty clank. Upon landfall, it suddenly kicked up a wave of dust and smoke that gently flew back into the slight breeze of the strange world's glimmering shines. Chap chap, this way strangers, you'll be safe here. No evil memories to be seen. Jojo exclaimed as both her and Ironhoof walked down the ramp while holding hands. Behind them, Yerik and Mori followed with Cat being the last in their line, waddling with two stubby paws for feet. Following after, Void and the others slowly descended the platform, all with inquisitive stares that were both baffled and surprised at the same time. Wait, hang on, can we just talk for a freaking second? He asked before they all suddenly took note of what had been within the force field. It had been a bunch of abandoned buildings and salvage structures that were mashed together. It was a strange collection of both tall crafts and small, creating what looked to have been some kind of base, or rather, a strange little town, one that looked to have come out of an abandoned apocalyptic tale. All around, wooden bridges and walkways were connected to these buildings that all had electricity. A water wheel had even been set up near a higher sector, a real device that trickled the liquid down into an ever-expansive water supply. Large, very large metal beams curved up and around this town, creating the skeletal base for the force field, as well as having its energy provider at the very top. All kinds of vehicles had been parked around, some acting as transport, while others were more or less designed to be other utensils, grills, fuse boxes, some were even used as makeshift gardens. Self-made windmills all turned at this town's outer sectors, while its residents all went about doing what appeared to be everyday tasks. And yet, like their saviors, it appeared that this town was made entirely up of preteens to young adults, leaving everyone baffled. What the? What is this place? Joby inquired as some of the residents waved from afar, while others began to approach with curious stares. This is home. A refuge for all those who end up trapped in this hellhole. Y'all are lucky the boss man caught the sight of y'all falling in. Otherwise, you'd be as dead as the skeletons that littered the city. Ironhoof exclaimed as both Mori, Kat, and Yerik walked off to do their own thing. A... a refuge? Void asked in a stern stare while looking back at the two kids who had helped them. Yep, not sure how y'all got here. But like us, I'm sure it was either out of stupidity or morbid curiosity. Jojo stayed with a dour look as she leaned against her robotic boyfriend. It's been a good while since we've seen a bunch of adults in this place. What brought you all here anyways? Actually, save it for the boss man. He'll catch you up to speed. He's more of an avid listener than us. <laughs> Jojo added with a smirk and chuckle as Void and the others looked at one another in baffled senses. You're... you're just kids. How long have you all been here? V asked as his fatherly instincts began to come out in stride. Did you all get stuck in this place? Is that what you're trying to say? Pavnu inquired, leaving both Ironhoof and Jojo to just shrug. I mean, isn't it obvious? You all came here. Surely you knew the legends of this place. No one gets in without barging in, you know? Ironhoof said as Jojo suddenly climbed upon him and sat atop his shoulders, now wearing his hat and all. Again, just save your questions and stuff for the boss man. He'll catch you up to speed. Tell you what this place is all about, you know. You're also welcome for the rescue, BTW. The Ripple said with a smile, 
leaving Void to just ask in a confused manner. Yes, of course, thank you, seriously. But who's your boss man, exactly? Void inquired, as everyone suddenly caught the sound of footsteps approaching. Turning their heads, Orbisalt, Ironhoof, and Jojo, along with many of the kids, all set their sights upon a tall and cloaked figure, completely shrouded in darkness beneath their tan tarp. Walking out from their main town with slow steps, this mysterious person approached silently and rhythmically, giving off a sense of sudden unease for the Novasons and their reflections. Oh, there he is. Don't mind the cloak. He just lacks it. He thinks it's cool. Jojo said with a smile as the shadowed figure grew larger and larger as he neared, towering over V by at least one entire foot. Oh, uh, don't threat. He's a big softy. This is just how he approaches everyone. Ironhoof assured as the figure stopped about 10 feet away from Void and his group. Squinting, they all tried to see who or what was within the hood's darkened corners, as a huff of steam suddenly blasted out in a small burst. I knew it. My senses were correct. A low, deep and raspy voice suddenly said from beneath the hood, leaving everyone on Team Orbisalt a tad confused. Uh, we beg your pardon, sir? Void asked as Jida slightly hobbled by his side. For a long moment, the figure just stood, cloak blowing within the dusty winds as whoever was behind it just eyed them down from his shadowed haze. They looked almost hesitant, speculative in their own stance, as thoughts appeared to be rushing within their mind. In taking a breath, the figure took a few more steps forward, leaving Void and his crew to cautiously take a small step back. They had no clue who this was, or if they could even trust these kids. Something felt wrong, but at the same time, almost serene, calm, a mixture that shouldn't even be. It was there in the moment. I... I don't believe it. It's... It's actually you. The figure spoke again as he looked at Void in particular. Uh, I'm a little confused here, buddy. You're gonna need to be more specific. The spark stated, leaving the figure the halt and looked down. Slowly rising out from underneath the cloak came a pair of shadowed clawed hands and arms that were hard to make out within the cloak's shade. Slowly and shakily, they rose up, took hold of the hood around the figure's head. In taking another breath, this boss man character nervously threw the hood back to reveal their face. Falling into a state of shock, Void, Jida, Pofnu, and especially Joby suddenly felt as though a bomb had gone off in their souls as they laid their sights upon the mysterious soul before them. Void. It's been a long time. The figure said as he looked up with a coal gray head, orange glowing antler horns, eyes, and a now left face scar. It was impossible. It couldn't be, they thought. But the truth was standing before them with a look of equal shock on display. Father? Joby nervously asked as everyone on Team Orbisol took in the sight of a roughed up, damaged, but very much alive, Core Novason.